Hey guys, it's Braden here for gshelper.com and today I'm going to show you how to select uh, boxes or actors by dragging instead of the usual method uh, which I see a lot which is by tapping. Now if you're familiar with our Boggle video series that came out a couple years ago uh, we were actually able to select the letters uh, by tapping and it would go ahead and select the letters we tap. Um, and so then T-Shirt Booth went ahead and made this demo, which is up on our site right now for free. Um, it's called Connected Boxes, and pretty much what it is is the exact same logic in the Boggle video series, except, you know, there's no letters or anything involved. It's, it's all just the selecting and um, the uh, selecting code with only the adjacent uh, tiles that, next to the current selected. So, uh, for example, we can't go back and select this one again because it's already been used. And uh, likewise, if we go up here, we can't select this tile 2 over because it's not directly next to the current selected. However, we can select diagonally uh, and everything like that. And so it's really cool. It's a great demo. Again, it's out for free on our site. Um, so my goal for today is to go ahead and change this demo and kind of build upon it to make uh, the, the code mm, able for us to, to select and kind of uh, just drag instead, which is much easier and I think it's more uh, attractive to your potential players um, instead of having to tap each tile. Uh, so I can see this being used in Boggle games, Word games, um, uh, Jelly Splash kind of games, anything you have to kind of select. So uh, let's go ahead and get started. Um, again, this is up on gshelper.com. Just search for Connected Boxes and it's a free download. Uh, and so you can go ahead and download that and come back to the video uh, when you've opened the project. I've gone ahead and opened this project with the release candidate. Um, I'm just used to opening it in the release candidate. Uh, you don't have to. It doesn't require any special features that aren't in the stable build. Um, just throwing that out there. All right, so let's go into the initial scene, and you'll see that there's only one actor. So let's go ahead and open that up. There's only a couple rules, which is really nice. And like I said, uh, we're going to be building off of this, so I'm not going to go ahead and explain exactly what everything does. You can go ahead and feel free to tinker around with all of the attributes and kind of get a feeling for what everything does. Uh, however, this change attribute, uh, this self-distance, tells the distance between the current selected actor and uh, the other actors which we will be selecting. Um, and so this is a really important behavior. And so if we're dragging uh, instead of tapping, that means that we want this attribute to always be updating. Uh, and there's a couple ways we can do this, but for the sake of time, I'm just going to add a constraint attribute because this will always update the attribute. And so I'm going to open the attribute browser and go to self distance. And instead of having to type all that out and select everything, uh, I'm going to go ahead and copy it. So I'm going to open up the expression editor for the constraint attribute and open up the expression editor which contains our expression. So when it's all selected and with both expression editors open, I'm going to go and click and drag into the empty expression editor and release to copy all of that over. It saves a ton of time. And then I'm going to hit the check mark to add that expression to the behavior. Okay, so there we have it. Uh, it'll always update now and so now we do not need this rule. So let's go ahead and delete it. Okay, uh, this rule pretty much um, informs the project about which actor is being touched first. So we need this, but we don't need to change anything in this. So I'm going to minimize it. Uh, it's the second rule that we need to edit a little bit. Uh, I don't expect this to be a long video. We're actually almost done already. Uh, but the next video, I'm going to show you how to deselect. And that one's going to be long. So I'm going to end this one uh, instead of trying to do both in one. Um, all right, so in our second rule, instead of when touch is pressed, uh, we need to change this behavior right here and then add another, uh, I'm sorry, not a behavior, this condition, and then add another condition uh, when we're done here. So instead of when touch is pressed, we're going to say when mouse button is down, okay? Um, and then we're going to add a condition by pressing the plus button in the top right of the rule. We'll have to scroll all the way down. And uh, we can actually leave this with the default because that's what we need. So when mouse position is inside. Um, so this is able 
this is this allows us to to get that selecting you know dragging feature. Uh, so really, I think that's all we need to do. Uh, let's go ahead and shrink the rest of the rules and kind of uh, go ahead and preview. And we can tap anywhere initially, and you'll see we can click and drag, and it will go ahead and select everything we're dragging. Um, all of the rules apply still, so we can't select this one uh, because it's non-adjacent. Uh, we can still go diagonally, which is really nice. Um, so yeah, that's about it. Uh, again, really easy once you kind of think about how it's done. Um, so in the next video, we're going to go over how to uh, deselect the actors that have already been selected. And uh, so that'll, that'll be really interesting. I hope you guys found this video informative, and we'll see you in the next video.